Want to go to Marianne Williams? You remember her, a very intriguing presidential candidate, spoke her mind, fought the good fight, and then stepped out of the race when the Joe Biden had all but wrapped it up. He has easily wrapped it up now. He is the nominee of the party. Uh, as you know, many people in the party are calling that into question. She is back in that race with a message for an open convention. Uh, think of me, Marianne Williamson with us now. Marianne, very good to have you back. Oh, thank you. Wonderful to be with you, Neil. Thank you. So, you know what people are saying? Um, it's an uphill fight for you or virtually anyone else in this environment. So far, um, the president is, is not giving up, not relinquishing a thing. He says, I got those delegates. You just can't sort of <coughs> pluck them away from me. What do you think? Well, he did get those delegates, but the people who voted for him voted for him before last Thursday's debate. This is an emergency for the Democratic Party, and we need to handle this, and we need to handle it quickly. The Democratic Party needs to recalibrate, and uh, the voices that are beginning to finally speak up, people who are finally beginning to say, this has to change, I hope that this weekend will be filled uh, with people speaking to the family, speaking to President Biden himself. He needs to step down now, and I say that with respect and compassion. He needs to move aside. We need to have a mini primary. We need to be having the conversation over the last, over the next two months that we should have been having over the last year and a half. And that is what we're going to offer to the American people that is going to be so inspiring and so motivating as to counter uh, the hotbed of grievances that Donald Trump will be offering. We need to get on with this. Uh, this needs to be about our country and our democracy and not the drama of any one man. Nobody is indispensable. That's not what we believe in this country. Is there time for that, Marianne? Is it time for that? What, is there time for that? Yeah, well, yes, there is time for that. Because if we listen to the American people, I know there's time for that because I know what I've been talking about for the last year and a half. I know what people want. When you have 39% of the American people who are reporting that they're regularly skipping meals in order to pay their rent, when you have millions of people who are selling their blood plasma, when you have over half of our bankruptcies based on medical emergencies, uh, medical bankruptcies, one in four Americans living with medical debt, when you have 600,000 homeless people, it's time for us to talk to the American people. I have been talking to them for the last year and a half, and as suppressed as that conversation was at times, I know the excitement that it generates. That is our biggest um, electoral risk in this campaign for Democrats. It's not just people voting for Donald Trump. Our biggest opponent is the hopelessness and cynicism, which makes a lot of people say, I'm not even going to vote. It's people staying home. That's the danger. It's people voting for Bobby Kennedy. People know that they have other options. And we have to, to offer the American people fundamental ways to materially improve their lives. That's but the, what fa but the fact of the matter is, Marin, they are looking at other names. Sadly, so far, your name has not come up. Uh, Gavin Newsom's name comes up. He's speaking right now uh, in Pennsylvania, where the president will be tomorrow. Um, he thinks that the president should f continue to fight the good fight. But his name comes up. Kamala Harris's name comes up. Um, they're not looking at you at all. What, what do you say? Yeah, when you say they're not looking at me, the same people who are not looking at me now are the people who wanted to nullify my voice over the last year and a half. That's the Democratic donor elite. That's not the Democratic No, no, voters. you might be right about that, but you didn't garner nearly as many votes and support. I mean, you did well. You impressed people with your campaign. I don't mean to minimize that, but you're just not the person to close the deal. In, in, in a lot of party <coughs> enthusiasts, right, because some of these are not the donor or leader talking. They're, they're looking for alternatives to Joe Biden, and your name doesn't come up. How and do you convince them, hey, consider me? If you are a Democratic candidate for president and you are blacklisted on CNN, and you are blacklisted on MSNBC, then the Democratic electorate doesn't even know you're there. That's their playbook. And then when you are smeared in all of the things that they do, and that's why I'm grateful to Fox for having me on. So when you say my name isn't mentioned, how would people mention my name who don't even know I am there? When you talk about Gavin Newsom, so Gavin Newsom is out there talking about how we need to support the president, and you know as well as I do that behind the scenes he's putting his team together. A status quo Democrat will not seal this deal. A, dem a, a Democratic status quo candidate who has been part of just pretending like nothing was going on all of these months is not someone who is going to be able to defeat Donald Trump. The Democratic Party will only win if we present to the American people someone who is not a status quo Democrat, someone who presents an energy and an excitement and a new possibility to the American people that will match the energy of Donald Trump. 
So let me out there, let the people hear me, and I believe that I am the one whose agenda for Medicare for All, tuition-free college and tech school, a guaranteed living wage, a department of peace so that we can wage peace as effectively as we now wage war, so that we can end America's drug war, so that we can truly deal with the climate emergency, which it is, so that we can eradicate poverty and give a massive infusion of hope uh, for America's children. We need, to, we need to be unequivocal advocates for the working people of the United States. That's what we need to return to. And nothing less than that will defeat Donald Trump. It's not just a matter of who, it's a matter of what. And it will take someone from, with, out, from outside that system who's not tied into that well, you might You might be right on that. Again, it's an uphill fight, to put Miley, as was your fight originally, to take on the president and his own party. But the way things stand now, if you don't succeed, Marianne, and you're left with deciding between Joe Biden uh, and Donald Trump, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is out there as well, but who would you vote for? I will vote my conscience. Many people have asked me on the campaign trail, what do we do? What and does your conscience tell you of those three that my, I mentioned? What my conscience says today is, is, is not the determiner. The, my, what my conscience says on November 4th, November 5th, the day of the election. Um, but right now, Do you think Neil, things I'm, would markedly change by November with those three names? Again, if you don't succeed well, and Joe Biden is the nominee, you, you would not be instantly considering Joe Biden, is what you're saying. What I'm saying is that my biggest goal, and I think the goal of many people, is to not see Donald Trump return to the White House. And I will, that will actually be the biggest factor. And that's why I'm running, because I want to make sure that Donald Trump does not return to the White House. FDR said that we would not have to worry about a fascist takeover as long as democracy delivered on its promises. So it's not Donald, it's not Donald Trump, I get that. <laughs> I can't imagine you going the RFK Jr. route. You might. Um, so it sounds like you would default back to Joe Biden. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you say yeah. Yeah, please don't put words in my mouth because those words don't necessarily uh, align with uh, the feelings in my heart. Uh, I'm doing what every American is doing right now. Looking, listening, thinking. And that's what we need to be doing. That's the duty of citizenship. Right now I feel that I have the uh, winning agenda and I have the winning energy and uh, I hope that uh, the uh, Democratic Party will open this thing up. Let's have many primaries. Let's have they an might, open convention. They might, but they're not going to open it up to you. So uh, a question I raised before you dropped out of the race was whether you felt like Rodney Dangerfield. You just don't get any respect. Neil, of course. We, it, listen, running for president is an emotionally brutal experience. Of course it is. Okay. But uh, if you're not tough enough to take that, then I don't think you're tough enough to be president. Marianne Williamson, always a pleasure having you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.